All right. Turn with me to 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. We're going to verse, do verse, start verse 5 today. I don't know if we're going to be able to finish it off. But um, in verse chap, 2 Timothy chapter 4, as Paul is finishing off his ministry, as he's ready to depart, meaning he's going to die, and he's going to be out of this world, he's going to be absent from the body, and he's going to be present with the Lord. You know? And so, um, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, he says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. So as Paul is giving some last instructions to the body of Christ, and um, she's specifically given Timothy some last instructions because I know this is the last instructions he's going to give specifically concerning ministry. The rest is say, you know, come and see me, make sure that you come to me before the winter, etc., 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 and greet these and greet those and all that stuff. But here's the last instruction that we have Paul given in his epistle. And the last instruction to Timothy, which is now to you and I as members of the body of Christ, the last charge and instruction, verse 5 is, but watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. That's, a, that's quite, a, quite a, a charge. It's quite an uh, instruction to take in as, 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 as a last instruction concerning the work that we need to do. Yeah, you know. And as we, as we look at the scriptures, you know. And so, you know, he says, um, so he says to Timothy, you know, you know, Timothy, watch thou in all things. Paul is warning the church. Paul is warning the church. The God's word is warning us as, you know, concerning things that we need to watch in all things. Especially, especially based on the information that he delivered us in the previous chapter and up to now. From time itching ears and turn away from the truth or turn onto fables. We need to watch out for that. We need to watch out, basically what it's going to come down to as we watch in all things, what we need to watch for is we need to watch that in all things and in everything, the truth of God's Word is going to be preached. The truth of God's Word is going to be upheld. The truth of God's Word is going to be guarded and going to be kept. That's our responsibility. And as we watch in all things, we want to make sure that we do not teach to itching ears, that we do not tell tale, uh, fables, that we get into the and stick with the sound fundamental doctrine of God's Word. So that's where we need to watch in all things, okay? And, and it's important that we do that, you know, because we, well, there's one thing that we've learned from the nation of Israel is that Israel had watchmen. God placed watchmen over them. By the way, is there a movie or a, a movie called Watchmen or a, or a TV series or something? I don't know. I thought I saw somewhere something, but I, you know... But Israel had watchmen. And the watchmen of Israel, their responsibility was to guard God's word, to guard, to guard the truth, and to, and to warn Israel from, of idolatry, of the doctrine, of the commandments he gave them. But Israel's watchmen failed. They failed, and we don't want to fail, and the church is failing today because we see men and women teaching to each years. We see men and women turning from the truth. We see the church today going away from that, and as our, we need to be watchmen as we're waiting for the Lord. Okay? And we need to be careful about these things as we look at the nation of Israel. Okay? That word watchman, in a, go with me to Isaiah. Go with me to Isaiah chapter. By the way, in your notes that you have handed out to you, in the back of your bulletin, I had Isaiah 59, but it's 56. That was a print, uh, not a printing error, it was a typing error on my behalf. Um, Isaiah, it should be Isaiah 56 and not 59 if you look at your notes. In Isaiah chapter 56, let 
Let's go read from verse 8. And Isaiah 56. I want to get you to verse 11 and 9 and 10 there, but let's go to it from verse 8. Sorry, I'm in the wrong. The Lord God, which gathereth the outcast of Israel, saith, Yet will I gather others to him beside those that are gathered unto him. All ye beasts of the field, come to devour, yea, all ye beasts of the, in the forest. His watchmen are what? Blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. The watchman of Israel's responsibility is to warn, to warn of the and 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 and, 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 and um, of the trumpet that's going to be sound, to be ready, to be to be to, to when the trumpet sound, to be ready for war, to be ready to stand. Also, in, the, in light of this, the watchman of Israel was responsible to God and to stand and defend the truth of God's word. And what did they do? They were blind. They were they they they, they were blind. They were not watching. Why? What caused them not to be watchmen? What is going to cause you and I not to be watching in all things that Paul is telling Timothy? What will cause us not to be watching all things? Let's go read further. He says, verse 10 says, His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down. Loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to what? Their own way. That's the problem. Everyone for his gain. From his quarter. Come ye, say, say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink, and tomorrow shall, shall be as this day, and much more, more, and much more abundant. The watchmen of Israel that should be warning Israel, that should be defending the truth and guarding the truth, they are just so busy to look what will please themselves. Let me tell you something, what is going to prevent us from the body of Christ, from watching and being, and, and being vigilant to, to the truth and to God and keep the truth and preach the truth, is because we're going to look at our own way. They shall heap themselves, says Timothy, teachers having itching ears. That's what the church will gather to themselves. And you and I, as we, because we're not watching, because we're so busy to look on our own way. We are so busy with our life, my career, my future, my business, my, 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 my. Instead of seeing what is the spiritual responsibility of the church, the body of Christ, in light of the doctrine. We get so busy and caught up in our way, what we're going to do. That we don't see ourselves as part of the body, part of God's purpose and plan. And so we're just so selfish in our own fleshly desires. We want to have our own will. Instead of looking, God, what is your will for my life? And the watchman should have warned Israel. And Israel, instead of listening, were not, they were not listening because the watchman was not interested to warn. And the last thing that people want to know is they don't want to be rebuked. They don't want to be reproved because they just love their lives and we don't mess with my life. And so the watchman is caught up in all of this. Go with me to Jeremiah chapter 6. And by the way, what's happened here with the nation of Israel, with the, with the, with the prophet Isaiah and the prophet Jeremiah and all these prophets, is they warned Israel, there's an impending danger coming your way because you're not keeping His commandments. And what happened is you're going to end up under the Gentiles. You're going to end up under these Gentile nations controlling you, having dominion over you. And I'm going to give you over to them because you do not keep my word. And in the same sense, you and I in the world today, if we look for our own way, what pleases our flesh and what pleases ourselves, you and I will end up in this world being conformed to this world instead of being transformed by the renewing of our mind. And we will not be proving God's will. The only thing that we'll be proving is my will, my I, 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 I. It's about me. Forget the rest. Because what I do is more important than what God is doing. And I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm pointing a finger at you, every one of you this morning. But I'm pointing some fingers back at myself here as well. Jeremiah chapter 6. 
Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 17. Let's go verse, back to verse 16 there. 16 and 17. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. God says, Walk in my old ways. Walk in what I've given you. My, we won't do that. We will just do what we want to do. Verse 17 says, Also said I watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. We will not listen to you, God. We'll cast your word behind us. We will not listen. That trumpet sound is to fight and to move. Israel is warned by the prophet to escape judgment of God. But their own watchman was ignoring it. And I tell you something, the church today, the body of Christ is no different than Israel was in time past. Because the watchman in the church is not warning the members of the body of Christ of the impending danger that is coming our way. And the falling away from the truth and the, the, the creating of, of, of fables. And we are few and far between it. Stand up and make a stand for the truth of God's word. That's the reality of it. Because when you do that, you suffer affliction. When you do that, you suffer persecution. When you do that, you're not liked. You're not elevated. You're not being valued. Because you are a party pooper. That's all that you are. Is that what you say, party pooper? Did I use the right words on, online now? Because <laughs> that's the only question. You know, you just spoil our fun. Because we're busy with our lives. Don't, don't you know, this. Whatever goes, we'll be happy with it as long as we can feel like we can be part of a social group that splits it every Sunday morning in our little social club. And as long as you don't say anything that's going to offend my own habits, what I'm doing, you know, just, you know, don't mess with my life. And the nation of Israel, they wanted the other gods. They lusted after the other gods of, of these other nations. And before you know it, God gave them over. And their watchman was not even prepared to warn them because they said, we will not do that. Say unto us soothe things. Say to us things that will please our ears. And the nation of Israel ended up in the time of Daniel and through these prophets under the times of the Gentiles. And let me tell you something. The nation of Israel today is still under the times of the Gentiles. They have not escaped. God has not delivered them from the times of the Gentiles yet. It will come. It will be fulfilled. But they are still there, and they've been 400 years before Christ, and 2000, it's 2,400 years that Israel is under Gentiles. Because they refuse to watch. Their watchmen didn't watch. And Paul says to Timothy, watch ye in all things, Timothy. And by the way, we need to be very observant that Paul's warning to Timothy is not just, you know, just here. I wanted you to read a couple of passages and be observant of the things that, he's, that we need to be vigilant of and the evils that present themselves in the church, as he said before in those passages. Go with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Let's go read from verse 1. I want to get to, to verse 6 there, but let's go read from verse 1. But of the times and of the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Talking about a prophetic day of the Lord. For, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as to veil upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake, it overtake you as a thief. Why? Because we have the Word of God rightly divided. We know where we fit in. We know we're the body of Christ. And we know we'll escape the wrath to come. Ye are all the children of light. Ye are the children of day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. But let us watch and be what? Sober. 
Let us be watch and let us be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that are drunken, are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. And for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But you know what we need to do? is We need to be watching and we need to be sober. We need to watch in all things. And we, why do we watch? Why do we watch? If we are off the day and it's not going to affect us, we'll be caught up, we'll be taken out before that happens. We know why we watch? So that we can warn others. People that are not saved, people that are not of the day, people that are in darkness, people that are still dead in trespasses and sin, they need to hear the gospel. So we need to be watch and be sober as we preach the gospel. Look at Acts chapter 20. Go back in Acts chapter 20 as Paul is speaking to the elders of Ephesus and he's, and he's giving them some instructions before he's never going to see their face again. In Acts chapter 20, you and I need to be watchmen. That's what we need to be. Watchmen. Verse 28. Verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Who is he talking to? He's talking to the elders of the church of Ephesus. And God has made them overseers over the church to feed the church of God which he's purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own self shall men arise speaking perverse things and draw away disciples after them. What are they going to do? They're going to come into the church and can take the truth away and they're going to draw disciples after themselves. People that follow them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with what? Tears. Paul has warned these folks night and day. Do you think Paul is exaggerating here? Do you think Paul is lying here when he says, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears? Is that an exaggeration or does Paul really cry for these people that he's warning? It's true. He's not lying. He's speaking by inspiration. It's God-inspired word. And he says, I, 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 I cried. I warn you, every one of you, there's some danger that's coming. People are going to come in and not spare the flock from outside. And from inside will men arise speaking perverse things. And before you know it, you'll destroy this local assembly. Because people are going to want to know what they want to hear. Your job as overseers is to feed the church. Feed the flock. And my job is to feed you. Our job as an eldership in this church is to feed you. And to watch. And to warn. And to reprove. And to rebuke. And to exhort. Not to teach to itching ears. Not to teach you what you want to hear. Because you want to know what you want to hear. You need to go to some church down the road that will tell you what you want to hear. Here we're going to have to preach the Word of God. And sometimes it's going to make us extremely uncomfortable. You know, sometimes we look at people, we look at the church, we look at people in the church, and we can see them on a very sure, straightforward collision course in their life, and they're making wrong decisions, and we warn them, don't, don't, don't! Even to the point where we have tears in our eyes, and you know what they do? I'm going to do my thing. And you just have to watch. That's all you can do now. Take heed. Hear the doctrine. Hear the truth. Don't turn from the truth. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 13. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 13. Let me tell you something too. Sometimes, you know, the hardest thing for me in the work of the ministry is when there's people that I see that I love and I, de and I value them really, really, really dearly. I really value them. And I can see them just going off in the wrong direction. 
and you try to lift them, exhort them, and help them, and they just go ahead, and it's just painful. Paul says, we would have been part of our own soul to you. We've given of our own self to you. The more we love you, the less we be loved. The more we love you, the less we be loved. Why? Because what we say and what we preach is wanting to uplift you and build you up, not to break you down. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 16, he says, verse 13, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong, behave yourself, be, uh, uh, um, carry yourself as a man, not as a child, as a man. Watch ye, stand fast in the truth, quit you like men, be strong. Strong in what? In the faith, in, the, in, in having the armor of God on. Be a man. Watch ye. Stand fast. Because the days are evil. The system of this world is not designed to edify you for, eternal, for your eternal destiny. The systems of this world, the conforming of this world, is to, dis is, is to take away from you, for you not to see what God's purpose and plan is for you, and that His will is for you in, his li in, in, in your life. We talked about God's will this morning. It's in His Word. It's what God is doing. But we need to watch. We need to warn. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Paul is talking all the time. Watching. Watching, guys. I'm warning you. I'm watch. We, 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 we're on the watch. Because the satanic policy of evil, his, his plan of evil is to destroy the local assembly. Destroy. By the way, you know how, you know what, this, what Satan will attack? He's going to attack God's word always. But he's going to attack God's institutions too. He's going to take free will and free choice away from you. It's one of the first things that he's going to do because God is the one that instituted free will and choice. Number two is the institution, the second institution that God gives is the institution of what? Husband and a wife. A man marrying a woman. A woman marrying a man. Becoming one flesh. You know what the satanic policy of evil is? Is to take that institution away. It's happening in our day. We're watching as it's happening. And we need to warn. Third institution is the institution of family. You know how you get a family? You have a husband and a wife. They come together in one flesh and they produce a child. Man and a woman. The way that God has designed it and instituted. And they have a family. Now, people that don't, I'm not saying that if you have an adopted child and stuff, you don't have a family. I'm not saying that. You guys know better than that. You're still a family. But I'm talking about a biological way in the institution that God set up there. That's going to be attacked. And we see these things happening in our day and we have, we're watching it in all things. And we have to warn. But we're going to suffer when we do warn. Because it's not going to be received well. And the last is government. The last is government. The last institution, institution of government. Take that away. Um, where am I? Ephesians chapter 5. You say, Des, why are you so serious today? Because the verse I'm currently dealing with is a very serious verse. And Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11 says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Oh yes. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever thing doth make manifest is what? Light, the truth. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk, what? circumspectly not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil wherefore be ye not unwise but understanding what the will of the Lord is as the church is turning away from the truth and as we watching they are not wise not understanding what the will of the Lord is and as we walk circumspectly and we understand what's going on in the world and we watching because that's what you do when you walk circumspectly we warn of the trouble that's coming our way have I said this to you before? I think I've said it to you before. 
But what you and I have right here, right now, and being having up to now in the body of Christ, the freedom to come and fellowship together like this, the freedom to have what we have today, don't take that for granted that you're going to have it in the next five or ten years. Do not take it for granted that we will still have the same ability and, 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 and blessing to come together in this way. Do not take that for granted. Do not. Because things are going to change. We're going into a cycle in the world that it is bad. It's winter. And so we need to be careful. By the way, when Jesus Christ was speaking to his disciples, he's warning his disciples to be to watch. The reason they had to be watching is because the flesh is weak. As he was going into the garden the night he was betrayed and he was praying. His disciples, the apostles, was with him. And he told them to watch. I can't read the whole passage, but you need to go and do that. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 38. Not Matthew, sorry, Mark, Mark, Mark. Did I say Mark earlier? Mark, Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14, verse 38. Okay. Yes. Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is what? The flesh is weak. And what happened? He went off and prayed and he came back and what were they doing? They were sleeping. They were not watching because their flesh was too weak. See, when the flesh is weak, you don't watch. That's why we need to be filled with the Spirit. We need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we can watch. You can't watch if you don't fold, if you don't have the Word of God working in you effectually. And he says to them, watch. By the way, he's also telling his disciples to wait for the coming of, as a watching for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. By this time, the revelation of the mystery has not been revealed. The, 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 the dispensation of God's grace has not been preached, has not been made known, has not been revealed to the Apostle Paul. The only thing that they're waiting for is the seven years of tribulation after Christ's um, ascension, and they're waiting for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they don't know, only God knows when that was going to happen. And look at Mark chapter 13. Mark chapter 13, verse 33. You can learn from all these passages and scriptures about watching. It's written for our learning. In verse 32, But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, know not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left his house and gave authority to his servants, and to every man his work, and commanded the, or the porter to watch. When ye therefore, watch ye therefore, sorry, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh at even or at midnight or at the cock crowing or in the morning. Lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. So even the nation of Israel is warned, the believing remnant is warned to be watching, not to be found sleeping like he found these disciples a chapter later sleeping when he told them to watch. Okay, and we need to be careful about this. By the way, there's another passage talking about watching and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go with me to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. And let me say to you, and I want you to understand this. I want you to hear me. I'm not going to be able to preach fully in the full extent of this passage. But this passage is not a catching away passage. This is not a rapture passage like we've been taught for many, 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 many years by many, many denominational preachers. This is not your this is not the coming of the Lord for you and I, the body of Christ, to be caught up. Look at this passage here. Look at this passage here, verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. 
But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man. What happens in the day of Noah? What happened then? What happened in the day of Noah? There was a flood coming, right? Who's only going to be saved? The eight souls on the, on the, on the, on the, on the ark. By the way, there was no nine souls because if you watch Noah, the latest movie, Noah, there was a ninth hideaway there. Come on, man. Um, that's Hollywood, okay? But as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. They didn't give heed to his warning. Guess what? He was 120 years in building that ark. How many years was he warning them? Same time he was building that ark. For as the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And they knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Where were they taken away to? In death. They died. When we're going to be caught away, we're not going to die. We're going to be caught up. It's not a catching away passage here. So shall also the coming of the Son man be. And then two shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other one left. Who's taken? Who's taken? The unbeliever in death. Who's left? The believer because they inherit the kingdom. Two men shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other one left. Well, you need to be watching. Israel had to watch. The believing remnant had to watch. And you and I need to be watching. Go back with me to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. By the way, you're going to say, this. so why do you go through all these passages about this? Because I want to tell you something. that God's Word is not strange to warning us to watch. To instructing us to watch. God tells His people to watch. He put watchmen over Israel. They don't watch. The nation of Israel should be watching. The believing remnant must be watching. And those very faithful disciples and, and, and apostles of the Lord, they fell asleep when He's telling them to watch. I'm thankful for Christ's death, burial, and resurrection that saved all our sins. 2 Timothy chapter 4, he says, But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. Paul is, saying to, Paul is saying to Timothy, he's saying to watch in all things, endure afflictions, to bear under burden, to suffer trouble. And this is what Paul is concerned. He's been, he's been instructed before. Go with me to 2 Timothy chapter 1. This is endure afflictions. To endure it, to suffer it, to allow it, to, to bear under it. Let me ask you, is afflictions, is it, is it easy or afflictions difficult? When you're afflicted, is it something that is, eh, there's a problem, is it like water on a duck's back or is afflictions hard? Is it difficult? It's hard and it's difficult. It's not easy. You know why the church wants teachers, hipping themselves teachers, having itching ears? Why the church wants to hear fable? Because they don't want to suffer affliction. That's the only reason. Paul says to Timothy, as he's be fearful. Verse 8 says in chapter 1 of 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 8 says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of my Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Be partaker of the afflictions of the gospel. Guess what? You start preaching the word. You instant in season out of season. What has guaranteed us? Afflictions. The afflictions of the gospel. According to the power of God. Because people don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to be told. They don't want to be reproved. They don't want to be rebuked. They don't want to hear the gospel. Because the gospel is not just Christ died for my sins, was buried and rose again. The gospel is much more than that. It's everything that Christ brings us and the, and the walk that we have to walk, the life that we have to live, our conversation and our behavior and everything is part of the gospel. And the church needs to pay attention and they don't want to pay attention. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 3 says, Thou therefore... 
That word endure, you see that again there in 2 Timothy. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. To endure hardness. Is that easy, Cheryl? Or is hardness hard? It's hard. It's not easy. It's an endurance. But you've got to keep going. You've got to endure it. How are you going to do it? Well, are you going to do it according to the power of God? Because what will endure, give us endurance to go through as we suffer, as, as, as we warn, as we teach, and as we preach the gospel, as people afflict us and persecute us, what's going to carry us and, 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 and see us through? What will carry and see us through is the power of God. It's, his, it's the peace of God. It's the strength of God. It's the all-sufficient grace of God in us. It will carry us. We will endure hardness as a good soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you and I teach, when you and I preach, we see people and we, we just have to endure. We have to be long-suffering and meekness instructing them. As they are taken captive by Satan at his will, led away, as they are led away captive, you and I can warn them by the instruction of God's word at peradventure they can repent to the acknowledging of the truth. And we can just hope and pray for them to acknowledge the truth. The fact is in 2 Timothy chapter 3, Paul tells Timothy about his, about his manner of life and his doctrine. And he tells Timothy, you know my life. You know what I'm made up of. Verse 10 says, but thou, but thou, sorry, chapter 3, did I say Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 10? But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which come in me in Antioch, in Iconium, and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Did Paul suffer persecutions? Yes or yes? Did Paul suffer affliction? Yes or yes? How did the Lord deliver him? Sometimes he escaped it, but in that affliction and, 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 and in that affliction that he's getting, while he's getting 40 le stripes less one, 39 cat t t uh, 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 lashes on your back. What do they call it? The tail of it? Yeah, yeah, that one. Cat of nine tails. And when they, when they, when they hitting him, and they smack him. God didn't say, okay, sorry, I'm going to deliver you at number 22. No, he got all 39 in affliction. His deliverance was Christ alone. If you look through the time that the word of God was trans translated into English language and made available for the common man that plows the field to know more about the scriptures than the Pope himself, those guys were suffering and burned at the stake for making a Bible available to people to read in their own language. You know, when those guys were afflicted, God's deliverance was there for them in their affliction as they're burning, shouting out, none but Christ, none but Christ. We can endure afflictions. If a guy can burn at a stake and flames rush out of his fingers and going out like that, and have you ever seen a man burn? I have. It's not pretty. And as flames rush out from and it comes out from them, and they can still say, not why God, why? No, they say there's none but Christ. None but Christ. As St Stephen is stoned in his enduring afflictions, and as they're killing him with stones on his head, and they're throwing on his body, and every one of those stones are aching and paining, he's looking up. Can you endure afflictions? Can you endure hardships? Can you endure persecutions for making a stand for the truth and what's right? You better know you can because it's going to be according to the power of God. He will never leave us nor forsake us. There's nothing that can separate us from His love. That's the reality that we have. That's what His Word promises us. And yes, Every one of us at some time or other, when we do preach the word and we go through hard times and difficult times in preaching the word or making a standing for the truth, we know the truth, but the hardship in life is still so hard. 
you can bear it. Why? Because God is faithful. His grace is sufficient. In 2 Corinthians, go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. You know this passage. I don't have it on your notes. It's just it came to my mind right now as I was preaching to you. As Paul is getting his visions or revelations, as he's preaching the doctrine, as he's preaching to the church, there's afflictions that abide him. And he's guaranteed of those afflictions, by the way, he says. If he doesn't know what's going to happen when he gets to Jerusalem, the one thing he does know is that afflictions abide him. That's one thing he's going to get. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and verse 7 says, Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. You know what God says to them? And, God, and He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, Paul says, I will rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Does he still have afflictions? Yes. What was resting on him? The power of God. How? By God's all-sufficient grace. That inner strength and inner peace and inner comfort that God brings through His Word. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then I'm what? The only reason I'm strong is because the power of Christ is on me. Because of the all-sufficient grace of God. I can do this. And for that reason, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches. Because let me tell you something. You never need God's grace. You never need God's grace when everything is going smooth in your life. But when things, hardship and ache and tribulation and loss and whatever comes our way and you're suffering for the sake of preaching and making a stand for Christ, then you need it. Then you realize and know it. Because you're too busy with yourself feeling good about yourself that you're, you don't realize the grace of God until you need it. And when you need it and you pray, God, please, He gives you the peace that passes through understanding. He works His all-sufficient grace in us and He gives us the strength to, 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 to even to rejoice in infirmities and reproaches for the sake of Christ. Because He brings an inner strength and peace and comfort that you and I cannot, by natural man, cannot bring and create. Let me tell you something, there is nothing, there is nothing, there is absolutely nothing that any one of us here today, listening online, listen, you know, online there and on YouTube, or, or there is nothing, nothing, nothing that this life can bring to us where we will not, uh, or that we will be feel completely alienated from God's love and completely alienated from His all-sufficient grace. Ne nothing can separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Look at what he says in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I know I'm deviating a little bit here from, 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 from the passage here, from my notes at least. Verse 33. Romans chapter 8 verse 33. Talking about the body of Christ and positionally who we are and what we have. In Romans chapter 8 verse 33, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yet rather even risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who maketh intercession for us. What is Christ doing for us? He's making intercession for us. Who's praying for us with, uh, with, with, with utterances that, that cannot be made known according to the will of God for us? The Holy Ghost is doing that for us. Who is for us? God is for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? There's all the things that Paul went through in his life. As it's written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded. You know what? Sometimes it doesn't seem like we win the battle. 
Sometimes we seem we lose the battle with somebody that we try to convince of the truth and convince of what God's Word is saying and convince of, of, of whatever it is. You know, and it feels like we don't win the battle. But you know what we win? We won the war, man. Because we escaped the wrath to come. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now that's a great passage. Nothing. Nothing. There's nothing this life can bring us and come us that you and I cannot bear and cannot handle. Everything we can steadfastly stand and thank God for His all-sufficient grace and experience the power of Christ. But to do that, you've got to believe the doctrine. It's not a, it's not a magical pull that you just take and now you feel that. Okay? It is the truth of God's Word, and that's why you need to give attention to it. That's why we need to put it in us. Because it's when it's in us, we'll be watching, we'll be sober, we'll be looking. We'll endure afflictions. We can. Because we never learn. And, and you know what? I, I pray that I won't find that day that I'll be standing up here and somebody walks there with handcuffs and puts me in handcuffs, drags me out here and throws me in prison because I'm preaching against what the world thinks I should be preaching. I pray that doesn't happen. I don't want to that happen, but I know if that happens, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I know that His grace is going to be sufficient for me. And life or death doesn't matter. Nothing, not even death, can separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. You'll be absent from the bodies to be what? person body there's nothing this life can throw at us think about that for a second there's nothing nothing absolutely nothing that this world can throw us that we cannot handle and if we cannot handle it the reason is not because God is not faithful the reason which we cannot handle is we do not believe and trust what his word says that's the reality of it We'll close in Second Timothy. I know it's a little heavy this morning, right? Second Timothy chapter four. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. That's not very comforting words to we want to hear. The last words, instruction that Paul is giving Timothy. Oh, he's going to talk about what God stood with him and all that stuff. But here he's saying, watch Timothy. You watch in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Get out there and get it done. Get it done. Right? Just do it. Watch thou on all things. Endure afflictions. Next time we come back, we'll look at doing the work of an evangelist and making full proof of our ministry as we continue with this passage in the second part of being watchmen. You and I are watchmen. Let us not be the watchmen of Israel's watchmen. Israel's watchmen were asleep. Israel's watchmen was blind. Israel's watchmen was like dumb dogs. They never warned when the warning needed to go out to their nation. When, the, when they had to lay up, they, would, they were killing the prophets. It's giving them the truth. You and I have the truth of God's word. Let's be watchmen. Let's watch in all things and let's warn. And sometimes when we warn, we will have to endure affliction. Not sometimes, most of the times when we warn and we are watching, we have to endure afflictions. And later I said a couple of weeks ago, it's not so much you that they reject. And that's why you have to preach the Word of God. It's the Word of God that they reject. Father, we thank you for your all-sufficient grace. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the fellowship we can enjoy here this morning. We thank you that there's nothing that we can endure afflictions. We pray that we'll be watching in all things. This, this world is, yeah, in this present evil world is decaying and the perilous times are coming and in the last days and we see the men turning from the truth and fables being taught from Sunday to Sunday and from, and from pulpit to pulpit. We pray that we'll be watching all things, that we'll be faithful, that we will do the work of an evangelist. We'll make full proof 
of what you have given us in your word, the ministry we have received of you. So we pray for these things. As we fellowship now and we, we break bread together and we, we have a meal together and drink together and we have fellowship further, we pray that uh, we're thankful for the food that has been prepared for us. We're thankful for those that have taken time to prepare this. And we pray that uh, as we eat this food, that uh, nourishment to our bodies, we are always very, very aware of the fact that we are your body. And that we the, the members and flesh of your, of your son's flesh of, your, of his flesh and bone of his bones. And we're thankful that we are the body of Christ. And we pray that we have in communion and fellowship together. We'll do that to your praise and glory as we pray this by Christ with thanksgiving. Amen.